Hello. Before I move on to naming of benzene compounds in the next video, I would like to solve a few problems with you. You know, as we solve problems or we try to name or do the reverse or we try to check whether a name is correct or not, as we solve problems, the rules and the method of nomenclature becomes clearer to us with every problem. So the key to mastering it is solving as many problems as you can. I can't really do a large number of them, but a few I'll be doing with you today. And then in the next video, I'll be doing the nomenclature of benzene, substituted benzene compounds. So let's just start. I've written a few compounds here and the name is given and we are supposed to write the structure from the name. Believe me, this is easier than naming compounds. What do you do when you look at a, at a name? It is 2-chlorohexane is the name of the compound. So what is the first thing that we notice in the name? It is hex, the word root. Always start with the word root. The word root is hex. It means there should be six carbons. So make six carbons. One, two, three, four, five and six. You will make six carbons. And after this, it is two chloro. See the substituents. Two, this is the first carbon. This is the second. You know, when we are writing the compound on our own, we have the, we can take the liberty of always counting from this side, it makes it easier. So it is 2-chloro, so I put a chloro on the second carbon, so it is 2-chlorohexane. So this should be the basic skeletal structure of the compound. Every carbon is, has a tetravalency, that is it is combined to four other atoms or forms four bonds. So we have to make sure that every carbon forms four bonds. All empty spaces must be filled up with hydrogens. So what do we do? This is one bond, so hydrogens would be three. These are two bonds, so there should be two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. This already forms three bonds, therefore there should be only one hydrogen here. And this is only one, so there should be three hydrogens here. So this is the structure of 2-chlorohexane. Now we have pent 4 n to all Find the word root, pet. Make the five carbons first. One, two, three, four, five. All right? Pent, four N. One, two, three, four. So this should be in. So it is four N and second carbon should be an all. It means an OH is attached to the second carbon. If OH is attached to the second carbon and the fourth carbon has unsaturation, then this is the basic skeletal structure of the compound. Just fill it up with hydrogens. Two bonds already, so there should be only two. Three bonds already, so there should be only one. Two bonds, so two. Three bonds, so there should be one. And one bond, so there should be three hydrogens. So this is pent 4 n to all the next compound that I'd like to discuss would be 3-nitrocyclohexene. Cyclo, it means the compound is cyclic. So we have to, and the word root is hex. Therefore it is, it has got six carbons. So it is a six carbon cycle. So cyclohexene would be like this. These are the six carbons. Now it is 3-nitro. Let us assume that this is the first carbon. If this is the first carbon and it's hexene and the locant has not been given, if there is no locant given, it means that the locant should be, whenever locant is not written, you have to understand that the locant is 1. So the first carbon has got a double bond. So if, let us assume the top carbon is the first carbon. And 3-nitrocyclohexene, the third carbon, should have a nitro group. This would be the structure of 3 nitro cyclohexene. Next problem. Cyclohex 2N1 all. Cyclohex again make cyclohex. Cyclohex. Second carbon, I'll, I'll assume the top one to be the first carbon. The second carbon has a double bond. So first carbon, second carbon. Double bond is second carbon. 
Since we always, according to lower locant's rule, even in a cyclic compound, if I say two, it means two is the lower locant and the double bond is between the second and the third carbon. Right? So it is cyclohex 2N and 1 all. So if this was 1, so the all that is OH should be attached to this carbon. So this is cyclohex 2N1 all. The last problem of this kind, sorry, is 6-hydro, so 6-hydroxyheptanal, al means it's an aldehyde, hydroxy means the alcohol and as you know, al, that is aldehydes are always terminal groups and al is the main, uh, I mean, is the main uh, functional group and therefore this should be on carbon 1. So we'll start with, although I'll write it in the end here, we'll be counting it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is heptan, CHO makes it heptanal and remember this should be the first carbon because CHO is here and that's the primary functional group. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On the sixth carbon you have hydroxy, so OH should be here. So how would you fill up the hydrogens now? One bond, so three hydrogens. Three bonds, so one hydrogen. Two bonds, so two hydrogen. Two, two, two. That's it. CHO already forms four bonds because it's a terminal group and the actual structure of CHO is C double bond O and H is on this side. So it forms four bonds, the carbon. So this is what we do when we are given the name of a compound. Look for the word root, look whether it's cyclic or not, draw the basic skeletal structure and then start substituting the functional groups or the unsaturation and the final step is filling it up with hydrogens to complete the valencies of all atoms in the molecule, right? Now let us, there's another type of a, a problem that was there in the NCRT exercises which I feel helps you understand the nomenclature better. Let's do this one also. The question there is that there is 2,2-dimethyl pentane and another IUPAC name is given and that is 2-dimethyl pentane which according to you is the correct name. Simple. 2,2. Two, two. It says it is dimethyl. If it is dimethyl there should be two locants for both the methyl groups. So 2,2 two, two makes sense that it has two locants and both the locants have got their own, uh, sorry, both the methyl groups have their own locants. While in this, there are two methyl groups but only one locant is written. But when you have multiple uh, functional groups or substituents and you write the locants, in that case, even the locant 1 should be mentioned. It cannot be ignored. 1 is only ignored when it's the only functional group or substituent only then we assume it might be 1. But 2,2-dimethylpentane would be the correct naming. The next compound is 247-trimethyloctane and or 257-trimethyloctane which according to you should be the correct name. Looking at this we feel the lower locants, the lower sum of locants will be 247. Therefore 247 trimethyloctane should be the correct answer. The next question is 2 chloro 4 methyl pentane or 4 chloro 2 methyl pentane. Right? The methyl group is only uh, a substituent and chloro is a functional group. Therefore, the functional group should be given more importance and hence the functional group should have a lower locant. So while you are numbering this, 2-chloro-4-methyl, the 2-chloro should be correct. Right? Then you have but-3-ion-1-all. But-3-ion-1-all, yes. And but-4-all-1-ion. Alcohol is a functional group, while iron is, um, what is iron? It is only unsaturation. So iron should come before the functional group. 
Therefore, this name should be red. Two four seven trimethyl octane or two five seven. I have a doubt of this. I'd like to make the structure here. Octane would be one two three four five six seven eight two four seven four seven or two one two three four five okay it's numbering from which side the lower locants are on this side that's right i hope you get me two four seven these are the three methyl groups on this side the locants are two four seven and on the opposite side the locants are two five seven obviously the numbering should be done from this side and hence this name is right did you see every question that you solve will take you closer to understanding nomenclature and you'll get keep getting better and better as you keep solving problems go refer to a lot of publishers have books out there go and look into those books choose any one and try to solve as many exercises as you can um, of that particular book too but always come back to ncrt for preparation of the boards in the end or in the last month i would always recommend sticking to ncrt it helps you the most thank you for watching keep returning